Have you finished, Mr. Morella? How do you know my name? A multimillionaire can't escape recognition these days. The picture papers see to that. And the gossip writers tell us of your activities in the diamond market. I should have thought you could have afforded a paper of your own. But if you must read mine, let me call your attention to this page. Folks, stick them up. Come on, you. You got something in that case we want. Open it up. Uh, you, you can't do this. It's robbery. I'll call the police. Yeah, well, call them. What do you expect them to do? Float up on parachutes? Come on, open up. Stop that. You shut your trap. I'll arrest you. Yeah, I know. You're from Scotland Yard. One more step and I'll plug you. Thanks, brother. What was the big idea? Well, I, I thought he might prefer a headache to lead. Well, when he wakes up, I hope he's grateful. Thank you. That's all we want this trip. Now, listen, folks. We're going to dump this crate and put you outside. Make no fuss and you won't get hurt. Keep them covered. Okay. Make a landing, buddy. Shh. Make a landing. charge you with assault and battery or thank you for saving my life. Well, not the former, I hope. You're right. My name is Benting. Mine's Drake, Jack Drake. I shan't forget it. Hi, you! Are you going to stand there doing nothing while they get away with my diamonds? Well, what do you expect in the middle of a field? I'd better get busy and quick. But I've been robbed, I've been robbed. Well, you ought to be thankful that you're alive to tell the tale. But those diamonds are worth 7,000 pounds. 7,000? Are they really? Hi, you! Now then. Somebody's beaten us to it. The rats.
longer will you be with that sermon? Uh, I, I won't be long now, my love. Tell me, Grace, and forgetting for the moment that I'm the assistant commissioner, what's your private opinion of that book? Think there's anything in it? Well, quite unofficially, I do. And quite unofficially, so do I. No ordinary author could have got the inside information that's in that book. Do you think we should check up on him? As a matter of fact, sir, I have. Oh, uh -huh. Scotland Yard descends so low as to call in novelist aid. Find anything out? No, he's completely covered his tracks. The publishers have no idea who he is. They wish they did. They'd what? like the sequel. What about his royalties? The publishers are instructed to pay all proceeds into some research fund. From now on, every crime in the country will be attributed to Crackerjack. Are you still reading that Crackerjack? I have you know you have an appointment with a manicurist at 11 o'clock. Another with a masseur at 11.30, you're due at the Polyers at 12.15, and it's now half past 12. Oh, stop nagging, Emmy. Have you read this? Well, if you want my opinion, the fellow that wrote that must have swallowed the Blarney Stone itself. Oh, so you have read it, have you? Oh, well, I just took a slant at it. Now, will you be getting out of that bath? Oh, don't bully me, Emmy. Has my costume arrived? The one you'll be wearing at the Humboldt party? There's neither sign nor smell of it. Oh, that's very worrying. I'll phone down to the hall porter and see if it's arrived yet. <laughs> I'm speaking for the Baroness von Holtz. Has no parcel arrived yet? No, not yet, madame. Well, when it does come, will you have it sent up at once? At last. Now, will you be hurrying at them? Any? Mm-hmm. Do you remember Mr. Jack Drake? Jack Drake in Berlin? Would I be likely to be forgetting that fella? You almost broke your heart. He did nothing of the kind. Do you think I've known you from your cradle? without knowing more about your heart than you do. All right, have it your own way. What brought that corner boy into your mind again? That book, Cracker Jack. Ah. There are certain passages in it which somehow keep on making me think of Jack Drake. Well, if you'll take my advice, you'll put him out of your mind for good and all. I wonder what's happened to him. Oh, there's one for me, and one for you. The trouble with grapes is you never know what to do with the pips. And not spitting them out, Chris. <laughs> ah, I dare say, but I, I don't think Matron would care for that. What's your other name, Mr. Drake? My other name? Jack. You like that? Yes. What's yours? Cynthia. Cynthia. Well, that's funny, because this is Cynthia, too. So you evidently belong to each other. This is Cynthia the rabbit. Now, watch that. Look. Look, look. Isn't that cute? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Drake, I should like to introduce Mr. Weller, the secretary. Good afternoon. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? You know, I like this place more each time I come here. It's really fine. They all seem so happy, too. Oh, they are, indeed. And we've got an enormous waiting list. We've been trying to raise the money to build a new wing, but we haven't got very far with that yet. Really? Well, if I gave you 10,000, that would help, wouldn't it? Ten... Uh, Mr. Drake, do you really mean that? Certainly. I mean to say that would help with your immediate liabilities, wouldn't it? Uh, more than that. Well, then, consider it done. Do you mean that you could let us have it soon, at once? <laughs> well, I don't, uh, I don't know exactly about it once, but uh, within 48 hours. <laughs> would you mind coming down to my office? I would like to... Yes, uh, all right, I will. Goodbye, darling. Uh, uh, goodbye, goodbye, uh, goodbye, baby. Goodbye. Uh, good, goodbye. 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 No, no, don't do that. I don't like that. I'll come. Bye, Mr. Drake. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Drake. Good morning. Any mail? Uh, your secretary collected it, sir. Oh, thank you. For well, the Baroness von Holtz. Uh, you've no right to come round here. Go round to the service entrance at the back. Room 225, second floor. Go on. All right, all right. 
rude lot of fellows, aren't they? Oh, we're used to that. Still, I don't see why a chap like you should have to go round to the service entrance. Here, I'll take it for you. What for? Here, you like ten shilling notes, don't you? Of course. Well, here's a pound for you. But she's got to sell for it. That's all right, I'll do that. But so do I know you're not a crook? Oh, I am, I am. But I don't steal dresses. There you are. Oi, where's your box? Oh, I'll give it to the man to take up. What do you want? A box for the Baroness. Oh, that's right. Give it to me, then. No, no, it must be delivered personally. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hear me. Hear me I now. said I would deliver it personally. Good afternoon. You? What on earth are you doing here? Delivering your dress. Are things as bad as that? They are. Do you know I haven't had a drink for at least an hour? Well, this certainly calls for a little celebration. Annie, put out the drinks. Yes, madam. So I found you at last. What an impertinent man you are. No, your English is not quite correct. Impertinent means... I know. You personify it. It's water, not soda, isn't it? How nice of you to remember. I've got a very good memory, Mr. Drake. Oh, no, you haven't. You've forgotten my other name. Jack. I beg your pardon. Jack. Oh, do say it again. Oh, you see, there's nothing wrong with my memory, Mr. Drake. Or with mine. I found you, haven't I? <laughs> Are you asking me to believe that you've been searching the world for me ever since the day when you walked out on me in Berlin without a word and left me in that restaurant waiting for you for hours and hours? Oh, don't let's start squabbling over the past. I had to leave suddenly, but believe me, I didn't want to leave you. But it was vitally necessary that I should. Can't we pick up the old threads again? Beginning with dinner tonight. I'm sorry, but I'm going to the Humboldt's party tonight. The Humboldt's party? It's the biggest party of the season. Everyone will be there. Oh, but you can't possibly go there. Why? Well, because they're hopelessly vulgar and indecently rich. Well, perhaps, but Mrs. Humboldt's pearls are the finest in the world. Oh, are they really? And her husband is one of the cleverest businessmen of Australia. Well, of course, I can't compete with that. Then I suppose dinner is off. I'm afraid so. Well, what about lunch tomorrow? Well, I don't know. I... Good. I'll be waiting for you in the lounge. Jack, have you read this? No, I haven't. Well, you should. He's a man after your own heart. My heart is set on only one thing. Lunching with you tomorrow. I've been waiting for you. The perfect secretary. Before I forget, Send a cheque for 10,000 to the Buckingham Hospital. Take a look at this letter from the bank. Don't worry me with petty things, Bird. It's about your overdraft. Just send the cheque. We've got to get down to brass tacks. Do you realize you've given away over a quarter of a million of your own money in the last few years? Or to very deserving causes. They may be. But now you're risking your liberty by giving away other people's money. Ah, only because they're too mean to do it themselves. Now, wait a bit. I know all about your Robin Hood ideas and your underdog and whatnots, but... There's a limit. Why? Today I endow a crib, tonight I crack one. Tonight? Have you ever heard of the Humboldt pearls? Of course. Well, won't they be enough to pay for the overdraft and the donation put together? I suppose so. Then it's all plain sailing. Mrs. Humboldt will be wearing them at her party tonight. Here's her very good health, my dear fellow. First of all, you've got to get your hands on the pearls. Don't I always get my hands on the pearls? Yes, you, you've been very lucky so far. Thanks. Besides, the Baroness von Holtz will be there. Her? To be strictly grammatical, she. You mustn't go. Listen, sir, when you fell for her in Berlin, it nearly got us both inside. I've never forgiven you for dragging me away from Berlin like you did. Burge, you are commissioned to do anything for me, from darning a pair of socks to bailing me out. But this is a different matter. Now, look here, sir. Let's chuck this Humboldt idea and clean up the hotel as we originally decided. The hotel can wait. Get me a mask and domino. It's the pearls I'm after, not the Baroness. I hope I haven't kept 
you waiting too long? No, I just arrived, as a matter of fact. I say you look terrific, huh? That dress will go down with a bang. Well, you look as if you'll go up with a bang. <laughs> what are you, a cracker? Yes, cracker jack. You know, topical and all that. <laughs> look, I bet you, I bet you won't recognize me inside once I get my mask and trimmings on. It's a bad <laughs> Right. I wish you weren't going. I've got a funny feeling about this business tonight. I'm not going to miss tonight's party after all the trouble I've taken dressing for it. And by the way, book me the best table in the restaurant for lunch tomorrow. Orchids for one. You're quite sure these next two rooms are unoccupied? Yes. Right. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. It's all right, my boy. Me, it isn't playing the game. Listen, uh, what are you disguised as, old chap? Well, don't tell anybody, but I'm disguised as myself. Huh? Price is the name. Uh, you remember me? Yeah. I can see you don't. Sonny Price, St. Moritz, last winter. Oh, yes. Uh, be dad, that reminds me, I'd entirely forgotten. I owe you a fiver. I bet you couldn't hold on to that bob round Sunny Corner, and you did. And here's the fiver. You <laughs> full of price and cost, I remember. <laughs> Mr. Hart. Now, how about a drink? Uh, oh, wait, sir. Right. What do you have? A uh, whiskey, please. A oh, whiskey, please. Whiskey. <laughs> Hello, I get it. Oh, no, no, you're wrong. No, Tony, Tony's over there. <laughs> I know you are right. Oh, Mr. Hart, this is no good. Everyone recognizes me. Yes, <laughs> if this goes on, I shall burst. Well, that'll be all right. It's in keeping with your costume. <laughs> oh, my costume. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. by the way, I'd forgotten. This is my old friend, Mr. Fenwick Price, uh, the Baroness von Hulz. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> yes, how, how, do you, how do you do? Oh, by the way, I'm booked for this Baroness. I'd better go and find out who it's with, in case whoever it's with is looking for me. <laughs> what a shock he'll get when he finds whoever it is is dancing with whoever it isn't. <laughs> Shall we dance this one? Or don't you do that kind of thing? Of course I do. I also drink. Drink? Oh, well, here's your chance. Champagne. Thank you. Thank you, Whiskey? Uh, I take water with my whiskey. Well, here's some water. Oh, right in hand. Oh, there you are, Baroness. I've been searching for you everywhere. I thought you were trying to forget my dance, Emerald. Heaven forbid. Why, this is going to be the great moment of my evening. Excuse me. Davenport. Who's the Baroness's partner? Oh, that's Hembro Golding, the fellow who owns Barton's. Barton? Yes, you know, the Bond Street journeys. Oh, I didn't know it was a tradesman's ball. Wally. Not a trick in the now, you know. Who is that? Wally Astle, England's rugger captain. And that, of course, is our hostess. Hadn't I better be introduced? Good idea. She'll be glad of a rest from Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Marvelous party, Mr. Sunbird. Yes, working out splendidly. If it works up anymore, it'll be my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mr. Fenwick Price. He's been complaining that he hasn't met you yet. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> how do you do? I knew your husband in Australia, Mrs. Humboldt. So did I. Dreadful country, isn't it? Could I persuade you to a dance? <laughs> oh, my dear boy. I gave up all that when Queen Victoria came to the throne. <laughs> <laughs> Can we probably do the same steps? Come on, let me coach you. Come on, then. Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. Why did you give up dancing when Queen Victoria came to the throne? Well, 
the polka went out, and I'm not built for gliding. Oh, dear lady, you sail along like a... like a... Go on, say it, like an airship. No, not at all, a soap bubble. Well, what I meant to say was a thistle now, <laughs> but I couldn't just think of the word. <laughs> Shall we sit this one out? I should not to. And if I may say so, Mrs. Humboldt, this is the party of parties. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're enjoying yourself. Well, who wouldn't be? A palace of a house, wine flowing like water, beautiful women, and yourself the queen of the lot. <laughs> Flatterer. Well, all fall in the pot. The exquisite taste of yourself. Such style, such elegance, and such pearls I've never seen the like. Of course not. They're unique. One seldom sees such perfect matching. Might I just take a look? I certainly. Oh, they're lovely. They are. <laughs> oh, the touch of them thrills me to the core. <laughs> you can't possibly see oh, them do like that. that. Oh, no, don't do that, please. Oh, yes, That's not do. At all. They're so I lovely. I can see them quite well now without that. There. Oh, <laughs> they are lovely. They're beautiful <laughs> birds. <laughs> The clumsy lout that I am. Oh, thank goodness they're all right. Hmm? Have you read Cracker Jack? Yes, and thoroughly enjoyed it. By Jove, he seems to have done some extraordinary things. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, our first item will be Interpretations in Tempo by Burton Pierce. <laughs> I have a little surprise for my guests. Me. Thank you. Four boys from America. Never been seen in London before. Yes. Cost me a small fortune to get them. I shall see you later, I hope. I hope so, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I have pleasure to announce to you tonight the first appearance in London of a new American act known as the Four Gangsters. For this privilege, we have to thank your hostess, Mrs. Humboldt. The Four Gangsters. And the manners ain't so hot When we travel we go steerage Still we've got something that the others ain't got Sing em up Come on now, stick em up No fooling, we're the roughest, toughest guys That ever hit this town And when we bump a bozo off Say he stays down We just ask a nice donation From the gunman's fund So come across you starting gals Or else you will be stunned Stick em up Get moving, stick em up Come on now, here are six good reasons why you shouldn't be a dunce. And if you want them, you can have them all at once. Get out, boys. This is a 
far as we go. All right, cut it out. All right, folks, reach for the ceiling. Come on, come on, it's a stick up. You shut your trap, sister. Think I'm still kidding, eh? All right, boy, out some of the lights. Kidding. Stop kidding. That's what I came after. Look at this lot. Look at their work. That's nothing. That rope of poles is worth the whole lot put together. Oh, but only take a look at these. Didn't Scarpy go after that rope of poles? He knows what's good. That's yeah, right. Hello. Hello, Scarpy. Hey, Shut up, the lot of you. Boy, in love, come here. Oh, what's the matter? You saw me kill a guy tonight, didn't you? Yeah. And for what? For these. We were told they were worth 150 grand, weren't we? Sure. Well, they're duds, not worth a nickel. Duds! What are you going to do? Plenty. Any letters or telephone messages? Uh, your secretary called for the evening first later. Oh, thank you. Mr. Drake, may we have a word with you? Certainly. Help yourself. Shall we go to my office? Well, that's as good as anywhere, the bar being closed. This way, please. Please sit down. I am the manager of this hotel. Yes. And this is Mr. Biles, my hotel detective. How do you do? I am sorry to keep you out of bed at this hour of the morning. Oh, it's all right. It's a single one. <laughs> I am afraid that I have bad news for you. There has been a robbery in the hotel early tonight. And your room was one of those entered. Good heavens, my room? You want to tell me I've been robbed? Now, please don't get worried, Mr. Drake. Let me explain, sir. What did they get away with? Uh, well, sir, according to your secretary... My secretary? Oh, yes. Uh, <coughs> some diamond cufflinks, a pearl pin, some diamond and sapphire waistcoat buttons. Yes, yes, but uh, anything important? Your secretary has assured me that there has been nothing else taken. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> well, by Joe, that is a relief. While deeply regretting this unfortunate incident, I must beg of you in future to place all valuables in our safe. You're quite right. I'll do that. Well, it might have been a lot worse. I'm glad that you take this point of view. Don't worry yourself. There's no need to take anything off the hotel, Bill. <laughs> that is a real sporting attitude. Yeah, there's no need to put anything onto it, either. <laughs> and that is what I call a real gentleman. Good night. Everything all right? A charming woman, Mrs. Humboldt. I know, I know. Any trouble? What happened? She handed them to me with her own lily-white hands. Oh. And was perfectly satisfied with the imitation ones I clasped round her not-so-lily-white neck. Splendid. Why are you so late? It's your fault. Mine? The manager caught me as I came in to tell me that you had robbed my room. Oh, that. Just as a matter of interest, why mine? 
Just an added precaution. I visited several others, so we ought to find the hotel safe crammed by tomorrow evening. Yes. Well, I think I've earned my beauty sleep. Will you try and be a little bit more definite about this man? Do you mean to say you brought me here at this unearthly hour to talk of nothing but this fellow Fenwick Price? I might as well tell you he was never invited to Mrs. Humboldt's party. And he's the only one of her guests who is missing. Missing? By get. Do you think he's got anything to do with this awful business? That's what I want to find out, and I was hoping you'd be able to help me. Yes, I can. Of course I can. Let me think now. He introduced himself with some cock and bull story about having met me at St. Moritz. <laughs> That's wrong somehow. Why? Because I'd never been there. <laughs> but what else did he say? Well, he was a bit of a nuisance generally. And I had to be polite to him because he insisted on paying me a bet he said he owed me. Well, I say, you, you can't help liking a fellow who does that, can you? <laughs> Why, of course. That's how he got me to introduce him to Mrs. Humboldt. Well, you heard from Mrs. Humboldt herself what happened afterwards. Yeah. So I understand why I'm questioning you about him now. Yes, I do, indeed I do. And the more I think of it, the more convinced I think you're right. I get I know you are. Well, you'll have to excuse me now, sir. I've got a lot of important business to do. Uh, that's, uh, that's all. Uh, need, uh, nothing else I can uh, do for you? Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm glad to have been of uh, some use to you. And, uh... What's the latest? Well, I've sent out a full description of the gang, sir, including the man who fired the shot. Oh, this is interesting. It seems that Mrs. Humboldt's real American artists have been found bound and gagged in their room. Really? This looks like a carefully organized affair. Clever brain work behind it. Yes, sir. That's why I'm very keen to get hold of this man, Fenwick Price. Didn't you say you had everything set for the Humboldts? Yes. Didn't you tell me you made sure to be wearing a pearls for the party? Yes, but... Did I let you down? Didn't I go through with it right to the end and have to kill a guy to do it? But it was madness. Never mind I... that. And for what? For this junk. Now think fast. What are you going to do about it? But I tell you, these aren't the pearls she was wearing. I know the real pearls, but I see them. I took those pearls off her neck with my own hands. Oh, boys, I've had the devil of a time. All right, where have you been? Ah, oh, I've been cross-examined in Scotland Yard for the best part of two hours. Phew. Well, Mrs. Humboldt, give her the world to get those pearls back. Oh, to the point, what do the cops want? Well, they kept questioning me about uh, Mr. Finnick Price. I introduced him to her at the ball. Said he'd met me in uh, St. Moritz, Shady Lane or somewhere, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyhow, he's the only guest that the police can't account for. Well, what's he got to do with it? Uh, quite a lot now, because I'm trying to fix this affair onto him. Must we listen to all this? Keep quiet. Go on, go on. Yes. Why, uh, she uh, sat out a dance with him, and he asked to see her pearls. Did you let him touch them? More than that. She took them off and handed them to him, and he examined them. Then she said that he dropped them, but they weren't damaged. I see it all now. It's this fellow Fenwick Price who has the real pearls. What do you mean, huh? What are these, then? They're fake. Oh, you mean this guy beat us to it? Of course! I've got it all now. The same thing happened to us in the aeroplane. If I could lay my hands on that rat, I'd... I'll find this fellow, Fenwick Price, if it's the last thing I do. What do you know about him? Devilish little. He introduced himself to me as an old pal. Do you know, he actually paid me a fiver for a bet that I don't remember. But that... that's Cracker Jack's trick. What are you getting at? It's in his book. He says a fellow will always remember you if you pay him up on an imaginary bet. He got an introduction to a bank manager that way. So what? I know a society woman who says she knows him. Now, don't oh, start... she's no fool. Used to be in the Secret Service. Isn't it? Isn't it worth a trial? All right. But you better deliver the goods this time, Golding. I don't like guys who make mistakes. You work fast. No, no. Go back to your own bed. Oh, look. Come on. What? Look. Look oh, at this. It's you. Look at this. There. There. Murder. Well, you don't suspect me, do you? No, but the police may. Gosh. This is a pretty business. Yes. We're in a, we're in a proper mess. You know, when I read that, I thought for a moment you'd lost your head last night. I never do that. Yes, sir. I saw him come out. Planes of pipe stuff. Scar, limp and everything. What was the number of the room you saw him come out of? 212. Who's in 212? 212? It is unoccupied. Somebody else was after those pearls. Yes, so it seems. 
And this poor blighter was killed trying to save a string of duds. And that's not all. They've linked up Fennec Price with the gang. Oh, well, of course, that's not so good. Some of the robberies last night were committed in rooms down that corridor. Yes, Mrs. Stevenson's 200, Mr. Jack Drake's suite, 204, 206. Well, I think I'd better see them straight away. Well, what are we to do? Where are the pearls? We must hide them. I always keep pearls next to skin, my boy. It preserves the luster. Prepare to receive visitors. Visitors? You shouldn't be surprised if this is our old friend, the police. Oh, please. Go on, be the perfect secretary. Will you please tell Mr. Drake that there are two gentlemen to see him? Please come in. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I am sorry to disturb you so early, but this is Inspector Lunt of Scotland Yard. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I see you've read your paper. Yes, nasty business at Ashton House last night. Yes, it is, sir. Who is this mystery fellow the papers are all clamouring about? A man called Fenwick Price, sir. Never heard of him. I wanted to see you, sir, because I understood that this room had been burgled last night. Yes. And a man answering his description was seen by one of the page boys walking down this corridor. Bit of a come down from the Humboldt pearls to my dress studs, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, he had certain peculiarities, sir. A limp, a scar on his face, gold teeth and... A limp? Yes, sir. Why? Well, now you come to mention it, I saw a man like that on the stairs last evening as I was going out. You did, sir? Had he got gold teeth, do you notice? Oh, well, I, I didn't open his mouth, but I swear to the limp. Anything else, sir? Well, let me see. By Joe, this is exciting. Now, this is really exciting, Annie. To think I had a drink with the most notorious man in London. Sure, I call that disgusting, not exciting. Not exciting? Don't you realize the man was killed at this party? Oh, I believe anything of society parties. I was introduced to him. I stood next to him, as close as I am to you now, Eddie. Aye, and that's why you lost your jewelry. Ah, yes. But what's important is that I am one of the few people who can probably identify him. And what's more, I've got a hunch. What, another one? I believe Fennec Price was crackerjack. Stuff and nonsense. Well, why shouldn't Fennec Price be Cracker Jack? Just as likely he be Jack Drake. What made you say that? What? What made you mention Jack Drake? Well, didn't you have a hunch about him when you were reading that daft book? Oh, that was nothing. But I'm serious about this. I'm sure Fennec Price was Cracker Jack. And I'm going to tell the police. Pass me that phone. Well, I'm much obliged for the information, Mr. Drake. If I want you again, I shall find you here. Certainly. And I shall be glad to hear of any developments. I shall be very glad when there are any. Good day, sir. Good day. I'm nervous. Why? I'm as safe as a house. What, with 15,000 pounds worth of stolen property around your neck? You'd better get rid of this at once. Mm. We'll be lucky if we can find anybody to take it. I'm a lucky man. What on earth did you want to say you'd seen Fiddick Price for? Have you never learnt, Burge, that attack is the safest defence? I see, taking the bull by the horns. Well, not exactly, because English bulls haven't got horns. Well, I must dress for my luncheon party. I can't keep the Baroness waiting. So you won't forgive me? I suppose you've entirely forgotten Berlin. Not for one moment. But we've such a lot to look forward to in the future. Don't let's worry about the past. You imagine we're going to see a lot of each other? Of course. We're on the same floor, aren't we? So we were in Berlin? I wrote you a letter, you know, after that. But it was returned. I returned it myself. Well, then you know what I asked you? No. I never opened the letter. No? I had no idea there were such strong-minded women. I just wasn't interested, that's all. I'd like to see the Baroness von Holtz. I've got a theory that Fennec Price and Cracker Jack are one and the same. I never credited you with such a vivid imagination. Call it instinct. To be honest, my dear, I should call it nonsense. Other people are not of the same opinion. Let's go somewhere out of town this afternoon. I'm sorry, I have an appointment. Well, this evening, then. I shall be engaged. Two to five. Oh. Two to five. 
Mr. Benting is in the hall, madam, asking to see you. Thank you. Tell him I'll come over straight away. Did I hear him say Benting? How sharp you are. That's exactly what he did say. Excuse me. Thank you very much. You said on the telephone you had something to tell me about your meeting with Fenwick Price last night. Yes. I thought it over this morning and it struck me that he might be... Who? Well, let's call him the author of Cracker Jack. So you know who the author is? I think I do. Then you're a very clever woman. It's the one thing everyone in London is trying to find out. You see, there are certain things in that book that I can't help associating with a man I know very well. Now, can't we forget about the book? I'm interested in Fenwick Price. Well, so am I. And I'm trying to tell you what I think about him. Well, what is it? That he does not exist. You mean that it was a disguise? Exactly. <laughs> well, you're certainly making things easier for us. I suppose now we shall have to... Good gracious. Will you excuse me a moment? There's a man over there I particularly want to talk to. Drake! How are you? Hello, Benty, old boy. Glad to see you. I meant to let you know I was here. I knew that, all right. We get to hear of most arrivals in London, you know, but I've been frightfully busy. Yes, crime is becoming quite the fashion this season. That's because everyone who's anyone is in London just now. Funny to think that in a pure world, You'd be out of a job. That's not very flattering. Oh, so you've fallen for that book too. Yes, any good. Well, you know. Yeah, just what I expected. Hello. I didn't know you two knew each other. It sounds terribly conventional, but Drake once saved my life. Really? Yes, I think you might sound a little more interested. The Baroness is more interested in that book at the moment. She's trying to persuade me to hunt Packer Jack instead of Fenwick Price. Well, of course, she may be right. You want to hold the telephone, please, madam? Thank you. Well, I'm afraid I have to say goodbye. Don't forget to let me know if you get on the trail of Cracker Jack. Why should I do your work for you? Because it's a woman's job, not a policeman's. Perhaps. Uh, Bente, just an idea. Has it ever crossed your mind that that aeroplane gang might be responsible for the Aston House business? Their methods are very similar. It has. Did you ever find out who they were? I have a very shrewd notion. Really? If only I could get a line on them. That's very good news. What? All right, Embro, I'll be in. You, of all people, can help me in a matter of the most vital importance to me. Come up to my suite, 225. Half an hour. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'll be round in half an hour. Well, that's certainly very interesting. Sculpey and Co, eh? Well, I wish you luck, Benty, old boy. There are a low-down lot of rats. Good afternoon, sir. Oh. Uh, did you get the money from the bank all right? All correct, sir. Oh, I see you upstairs. Very good. Well, goodbye, old man. Goodbye. We must have a bit of dinner one night. Get in touch with me at Scotland Yard. I most certainly will. Where's the money? Here. 15,000 pounds. Have any trouble with, uh... The buyer? No, he was scared of it, but he paid. Good. We'll deal with the hospital right away and the overdraft. Yes. And then, for heaven's sake, let us clear out. Why? Well, it gives me the shiver seeing you talking to Scotland Yard. Things are getting too hot. Yes, well, we're not leaving just yet. Then what on earth is stopping us? That infernal woman, I suppose. Don't forget there's a possible murder charge hanging over your head. You've hit on the two reasons that are keeping me here. Hmm? Firstly, the infernal woman you mentioned. And secondly, I dislike having my nice, clean, charitable robberies messed up by a lot of murdering swine. I'm going to put those gangsters out of business, Bird. How? I haven't the faintest idea. I'm sorry to disturb you, Baroness, and I'm afraid you'll think me nothing more than an old fool. But I did want to have a talk to you about that dreadful affair last night. Any new development? No, no, nothing that I know of, but uh, I've got an idea. I can't get it out of my head. But well, what is it? I was wondering, could it be possible that Fennec Price was Cracker Jack? <laughs> mm, I was afraid you'd laugh at me. <laughs> You're late, Umbro. The newspapers are full of it. And I myself have been trying to convince Scotland Yard that there was something in it. Mm. Of course, I have no proof. Have you? 
No, none whatsoever. But I'm not interested in Scotland Yard. It's from a purely personal angle that I want to get in touch with him. Well, we all want to do that. I've been robbed too, you know. That's just it. He took a ring of mine of great sentimental value to me. It was my father's ring. I'd pay ten times its value to get that ring again. I'm sure you would. But why tell me about it? Well, I hardly like to mention it, but uh, remembering your work in the Secret Service. As far as I'm concerned, that's done with and forgotten. But couldn't I persuade you no. to... But surely you want to get your own things back again? Well, naturally. But why do you think I, of all people, can trace that man, if he exists at all? You're a very clever young woman. Oh, thanks. You're the second person within the last hour who has told me that this is a woman's job. Well, going about as you do, meeting so many people, it does seem to me that you have a, a chance to... Ask him to come to you with tears in his eyes and say, here's your ring. <laughs> no, <laughs> all the same. I'm sure that if I met him, I should be able to persuade him to do so. The only way you will meet that man is to catch him on a job. That would be one way. Yes. And now you're asking me to fix an appointment with him while he's cracking a safe or something, eh? <laughs> I know it sounds very foolish. All the same, if you could help me in any way... But it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. And even if I decided to, how on earth would I set about it? Many problems, my dear, have been solved by a woman's intuition. No, Ambrose. Leave it to Scotland Yard. Say it's set a trap for him, and he'll fall into it sooner or later. Well, think it over. Don't apologize. Would you care for anything else? Yes, it's in here too. The agony column. What is? A message from your pals at Scotland Yard. Oh, to whom? To your own sweet self. Listen, it starts, Cracker Jack, am in great trouble. Please help me immediately. Now, isn't that touchy? Anything else? Please trust me. How can I communicate with you? Box Z. I think very subtle about your friends, the police. So you think it's a police trap? Oh, I'm absolutely convinced of it. Don't you? It might be genuine. Oh, we should worry. I don't know. We've never passed by a signal of distress yet. You're not thinking of answering it, are you? Don't you think it's a trap? Well, if it is, I should know how to deal with it. Take down this reply. Oh, yes. Take down this reply. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? <laughs> now, how shall we begin? Sir or madam, as the case may be. Oh, no, let's try and be a little original. Oh. If you will be at the Albert Gate tomorrow evening... Well, that's not very original, is it? No? All right, begin again. I have received your message. You will be put in... Charge? Touch. You will be put in touch with the person you require if you will stick closely to the following instructions. What are the instructions? No, no, don't hurry me. I'm enjoying this. Firstly, dress shabbily in old-fashioned clothes. Secondly, carry a large umbrella. Will you arrange for the rain? Oh, we must leave something to Providence. Thirdly, carry a copy of the Financial Times and wear one yellow glove. Destroy... The other glove? This letter. Oh, this letter. But bring the enclosure. What is the enclosure? There you are. The torn edges are as good an identification as fingerprints. And the meeting place? Do you know, I think we'll stick to the Albert Gate after all. There's room for another memorial.
the financial times? No, but I can tell you. Mines is improving, industrials look like having a rise. But Wall Street's a market. At present prices, you can pick up a million. Got a tenner for a cup of coffee? Yeah, there you are. Mr. X, even Parks have ears. Are you Mr. X? No, but I'm to take you to him if I consider you genuine. Well, look. Go on, come in the taxi. Well, how do I know you really are going to... You want to go or don't you? Well, yes, of, of course I do. Jack lives. This is where you get in touch with him, lady. Tell me, what's he like? Wouldn't you like to know? Is he married? Well, while we're on the subject, are you? Tell me, does he travel very much? Has he been to Paris lately? Or Berlin? Now, don't you ask so many questions. Now, come on, he's waiting for you. Come on. Master will see you. Try to frighten me. I understood I was to see Cracker Jack. In a sense, you do. Oh, where are you? How do I know you are Cracker Jack? You have my word. I come to the point. What is it you want? I pay you whatever price you want. I have no price. My health is not for sale. I understand. You disapprove of blackmail, don't you? It is one of the deadliest sins. You see, there's a man who's got some letters of mine in his possession. And as long as he's got those letters, he can prevent me from marrying. Marrying? Yes. I thought this would be the least strange part of my story. The name of this man? Hambro Golding. When do you propose marrying him? Whom? Hambro Golding. No, no. Golding is the man who can prevent me from marrying. Then the name of the man you are going to marry. That I can't say. Would it be impossible for you to go to him with your story? I daren't take the risk. You see, he doesn't know I'm going to marry him. Oh, please don't ask me so many questions. It means so much to me. Well, what do you want me to do? Please get those letters for me. Where from? Mr. Golding has just taken a house on the Thames, near Maidenhead. It's called Large Hall, and the letters are in a safe in his library. Will you repeat that address, please? Large Hall, near Maidenhead. Thank you. That is all the information I require. Then you'll do this for me? You may have heard that I usually assist institutions, not individuals. But in your case, I will make an exception. I'm so grateful. Now, when do you think you'll start on this? Today is Friday. The matter will be attended to tomorrow night. But couldn't you tell me exactly when you would do... Now, go. Yes.
Thank you. Go on, I'll take you back. But I don't want You're to. going back to the Albert Gate by the same route you come by. But I hate the Albert Gate. So do I. But that's where we're going. I'm going to jump out at the first traffic block. Oh, no, you don't. Because I've got to lock the door from the front seat. All right. No matter who asks, do you understand? Perfectly. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Drake. Good evening, Mr. Drake. Good Drey. evening. Good evening, Baroness. Sensible shoes, sensible dress. I hardly know you. Tell me, is it actually raining? Not that I noticed. I'm, I'm sorry, I must go. A moment, the Financial Times. How steel today? How should I know? A rather brittle, I see. Still, I should have hardly thought the Financial Times was a paper to take on a well, shadowbank tour. Will you please let me pass? I suppose you're enjoying yourself making a fool of me in public. Well, my dear, walking about London in shabby clothes with a large umbrella and uh, one yellow glove. How do you know I've only got one glove? Well, my dear, where is the other? Uh, after you, Baroness. If anyone inquire for Mr. Jack Drake, he has already dined. But he hasn't dined. If I said he has dined, he has dined. Do you understand? Pass the word. I've had the most interesting evening, if you only knew. Interesting? In what way? There's nothing I enjoy so much as gorging on good food by myself. You've dined? Indeed, yes. Where? On the best the Blenheim could offer. I see. Well, good night. Good night. Allow me. Good night. Good night. Mother of glory, what a sight you look. I've had enough comments on my personal appearance for one day. <laughs> you must be clean out of your mind to go out looking that way. But you've been out of your mind ever since that fellow Drake turned up again. Hold your tongue, please, Annie. Bring down to the restaurant. Head waiter, please. Have some food, Senda. I want the head waiter. Oh, it's him speaking. Well, why didn't you say so? Will you send up some food to 225? We want some uh, cold breast of chicken and salad for one. Hold on. No, not for one. Send up dinner for two, please. Yes, full course dinner. Mr. Drake may be dining with me. But, madame, Mr. Drake is at his dinner. Only one hour ago. Oh. Oh, I see. Thank you. Tobacco's down, steel's down, gold mines are down. <laughs> In fact, everything's down. Yes, but I see here there's a bit of demand for diamonds. Diamonds? <laughs> now you're talking. When are we going to split up that Ashton House stuff? That's my part of the job, Scopey. But I want to get busy. We're never going to find those humble pearls, nor the rattle took them by sitting around here. I use brains, not guns. Oh, you do, do you? That's why you went after that dame with the sub stuff about your ring, eh? Brains. <laughs> At home? Uh, what name, please? Baroness von Holtz. Yes, come this way, please, madam. Uh, 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 will you please wait here, madam? Excuse me, sir. There's someone to see you. Who is it, Proctor? The Baroness von Holtz. Baroness von Holtz? Very good, Proctor. When I ring, show her in here. Now, quick, you fellows, into the next room. All of you. Hurry up, there. Baroness von Holtz. Uh... Hembro, I've got news. Who? I talked to Cracker Jack. You have? Wonderful. How on earth did you manage it? Well, never mind about that now. I've talked to him. 
And he's coming down here tonight. Here? Tonight? What for? To burgle your safe. Oh, 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 please. By God, he's done it. Yes, sure enough. You're right. Quiet, I want to listen. Baroness, stop joking. But it's true. Uh, you see, I told him that you had letters of mine and were blackmailing me. Hmm? I had to make you out to be a crook. A crook? Well, I couldn't think of anything else. That's an awkward sort of thing to say to a fella. Fresh. Well, really, You're I You're not am. annoyed, are you? No. <laughs> no, on the contrary. I'm rather amused. It's magnificent work, Baroness. But I have to make immediate preparations to receive this gentleman. You see, it means a very great deal to me. I wish you luck. I hope you get your ring back. Thank you, Baroness. <laughs> it's extremely kind of you to have come all this way down here to warn me. Cambro, do you mind if I wait? I'd like to be here when he comes. I want to see him too, you know. Impossible, my dear child. Why, the man's a dangerous criminal. Besides, he may already have checked up on you. Yes. But you let me know what happens, won't you, Hambro? Of course, my dear Baroness, with pleasure. And again, a thousand thanks. What do you make of it, Scalpy? Well, he seems to have come through all right. Maybe I had him wrong. I forgot my handbag. Wait for me here. Yes, madam. <laughs> so you see, that sub story about my ring has worked after all. Yes, would you believe a woman could fall for a silly yard like that? It has. <laughs> and we'll give him a warmer reception when he comes, won't we, boys? Yes. He's the guy I've been looking for. Tonight will be his last party. <laughs> <laughs> would you believe a woman could fall for a silly yard like that? <laughs> The Blenheim Hotel, as quick as you can. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there you are. I wish you wouldn't do these disappearing tricks. Disappearing? Well, first of all, you slip away in the middle of the night without a word, and then return next day as if nothing has happened. Well, nothing has happened. Well, what have you been doing? You've been camping in the park? No, Burge. I've had an important matter to attend to. I've been investigating. Just taking a peep at Larch Hall. L Larch Hall? What is the matter with you? Nothing. My key, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. Is Mr. Drake in the hotel? Uh, yes, madam. He's, he's over there. Send a page, please, and ask him to come immediately to my suite. It's very important. Uh, certainly, ma'am. You see, Burge, I'm not such a fool as I look. I hope not. Steady, please. The Baroness von Holtz would like you to go to her suite immediately, please. Thank you. The Baroness... Oh, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Presently. You ought to know by now that where the Baroness is concerned, you matter very little. I'm so glad you've come. Good afternoon. How is the temper today? Listen, Jake, I've got to talk to you seriously. Do you know, you look even more attractive when you're serious than you do when you're angry. Please, Jake, for the moment, let's drop all pretenses. I'd drop anything for you, excepting my H's. You're always laughing. Whenever I ask you anything, you wriggle out of a straight answer. But now you've got to tell me this. What? Look at me. Are you Cracker Jack? Oh. <laughs> Jack, I'm serious. Please, please answer me. Are you Cracker Jack? No, just plain Jack. Do you swear that? My dear, you may know what you're talking about, but I'm dashed if I do. Pardon me. Does the name Larch Hall mean anything to you? Larch Hall? No. But an aunt of mine lives at a house called the Larches. Oh, please! At Sunningdale, right on the golf course, too. Can't you ever be sensible? Do you know you look really worried? I am. Desperately. Suppose you tell me why. Will you dine with me tonight? I'm very flattered. Will you? Let me see. Oh, too bad. Tonight of all nights. You won't. And yet, what's an engagement for, except to be broken for a better one? I accept. I'm so glad. 8.30 in the lounge. 8.30. Do you mind if we make it 9 o'clock? Very well. But, Jack, please don't keep me waiting. I promise I won't keep you waiting for hours and hours. <laughs>
Good evening, madam. Good evening. Have you seen Mr. Jake Drake? No, not yet, madam. Well, I'll give you a toast. Here's to our nocturnal visitor. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I get you, yeah. What time does this kind of fellow usually arrive? Oh, he won't come till he thinks we're all safely tucked up in bed. <laughs> but when he does come, I'll have plenty to say to him. I'll say, hey, come on, I'm thirsty. Anyway, he won't forget it. <laughs> Proctor, we'll have coffee in here. Oh, good evening, Bellis. You remember me? Oh, yes. Mr. Drake asked me to give you a message. What's happened to him? Oh, nothing, nothing. He's just been detained. Detained? Purely temporarily. He asked me to take you in and start dinner. Without him? Yes. Oh, no. I'm going to stay here and wait for him until he comes. Well, I bet two to one he's here before 12. I'll take that. He won't come till after. Well, let's make a sweepstake of it. All right, I'll take ten numbers. Oh, good. <laughs> Get rid of old Sarpus. Proctor, <laughs> put the drinks out in the next room. And that'll be all for tonight. Have the rest of the evening <laughs> off. Go out and enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice and peaceful in the country this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, too peaceful. I'd like to see town again and get a bit of fresh air. I think I'll have another glass of port wine. No, no, you can't do that. Oh, what do you mean? All this part of port struck by. Cigarette? No, thanks. I prefer lucky. Here, have one of these. I know where I can get some. Get away from that window. Boys, come in here a minute. Get a load of this, Golding. Proctor? What are you doing? Well, didn't you tell old Sourpuss to enjoy himself? This, this isn't Proctor. This is an imposter. Then who is it? Can this guy be Cracker Jack? By Gad, I believe you've hit it. That's it? He's made it an inside job, and we expected it to be an outside one. Wait a minute. All right. All right. I'll save you the trouble. Good Lord, it's Jack Drake. I've seen that mug before. That's right. Sure. In the aeroplane. You're the guy that swiped the rocks. Why, you dirty double-crossing son of... Oh, I know, I know. But so live for the greater glory of East Walthamstead. So Cracker Jacks, the well-known philanthropist and man about town, Mr. Drake. <laughs> we live and learn. And the respectable Mr. Golding, a fence. The Honorable Tony Davenport, a crook. <laughs> As you say, one lives and learns. Don't count too much on the living. <laughs> and all for the love of a baroness. <laughs> I was right, wasn't I, boys? Yes. yes, now I understand. Well, I don't want to hurry you, gentlemen, but I'm already late for an appointment. Better late than never. It'll be never if you don't listen to me. I want to talk to you. Step over here. I refuse to stay here a minute longer. I'm going to Latch Hall. What for? Because he's there. Now, stop bluffing me. I know who he is. You do? Then why did you send him there? Because I was a fool. I told him a lot of lies about letters and blackmail, but I didn't know then what they were going to do with him. I tried to stop him, but he only laughed at me. Oh, no, don't upset yourself. He knows who got you to send him there and why. Oh, well, then he'll never forgive me. Oh, please, I must go to him at once and explain everything. All right. But first, promise to keep quiet and do just as I tell you. I promise, but please hurry. Yes, we shall have to hurry, or you'll be late. What do you mean? He's expecting you. Expecting me? What do you think I'm here for? Come on. What I mean is, it's just a chance we might give you a break. Because there's big business we can do together and stop this competition. Do you mean you're inviting me to join your gang? Uh-huh. This is very interesting. Not too much exercise, brother. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. I'm only just stretching my legs. Uh, what are your terms? For a start, the Humboldt pearls. No, that's rather a snag. Why? Oh, <laughs> because I haven't got them. Well, don't try to pull that. We know you grabbed them. Oh, I grabbed them all right, but I cashed in on them next day. Oh, you did, did you? Red hot stuff that every cop and insurance bull in town was sweating after. There was only one man that could handle them, and he did. I'd like to know a sucker like that. Who was it? Oh, you know him better than I do. Come on, quit stalling. Give me his name. Certainly. The man who bought them was, um, 
Hambro Golding in his Bond Street shop. Come again? What? Hasn't what? he told you? Why, it, you... It's a lie! It's a lie! You shut up! It's ridiculous! You're such a crack! I can't use preposterous... Why, you rat! Why should I do you such a thing? You do that with that... You Put him up, all of you. Quick, boy. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't think because I wear an eyeglass that I won't use this. Now, listen, Drake, I didn't mean anything personal. We just wanted you to be one of us. Yes, that was the real insult. But we wanted you real bad. We got big plans for the future. I've planned your future for you. And you won't have to wait long. The police will be here at any minute. Police? Yes, they're great friends of mine. And I don't want to interfere with their work unless you force me to. Go on, back there. Back against the fireplace, all of you. Go on. Will you sit down? How can you expect me to sit down and do nothing? He's in danger, I tell you. Oh, he'll get out of it just as he always has. Sit down. Sergeant, you cover the back of the house. You two cover that side. You two cover this side. And you two stay with me. All set, sir. Right. Now, once more, don't move. Stay where you are. Pity. Keep perfectly still. I've warned you. Come on, boys. In. I'm still here. This is the Ashton House stuff, all right, sir. You poor saps, the man you once gone through that window, Cracker Jack. Yes. Look. What? What? Everything all right, sir? What did you expect? Jack. Jack, I must talk to you. you take your hand off the choke. But I must explain. I tried to stop you. Why did you go down? All for the love of a baroness, so they told me. But what about Goldie Gaines gang? We know all about that. But I can tell you who he is. He's Don't that... tell me. Tell your grandmother. But this is preposterous. Take them away. It's an outrage. And you call yourselves cops. Come on. We must fetch the police. Oh, no. No, I forgot. I was going to say... Shut up. He ought to be here by now. If he isn't... There he is. He must have cut off his engine. We'll signal to him to land right away. All right, he's answered. You've got hold of the wrong man, I tell you. I have a good memory for faces. There are certain things I never forget. I can tell you that if I... Oh, boy, if you could only cook. Come on. Well timed, good fella. Well, goodbye. Thanks for coming to see me off. Can't I come too? No, of course you can't. Sir. But I want to. There's only room for two in this airplane. Oh, Jack, you think of everything. Come on, then. Oh, just a minute. Oh, I, I said, uh, oh, no, please. Please, no, oh, just, just a minute, please. No, I, I, hi. Don't you want me? On our honeymoon. Don't be silly.